Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My hair's sticking up a little bit. Uh, it's another day that the Lord has made, and I'm so excited. I woke up this morning, and I um, started watching some clips and looking at photos from the wedding. Everybody's eyes on the wedding. It's a beautiful occasion. Um, and I started seeing a lot of um, comments and snippets from Bishop Curry's message or sermon at the wedding. And so I just took the time to go on CNN.com and listen to the entire sermon. And when I, I, the man really brought the sum of the gospel to not only those in attendance of the wedding, but the whole world is watching and it was it was so nice to see a minister take an opportunity where the entire world was watching to really summarize the gospel and it came down to one word which is love you know when Jesus came, he didn't come to condemn the world. And all of us have condemnable ways. Even if we have relationship with Christ now, even if we are calling ourselves Christians and are actively walking therein, we still have things in our life. We still have mannerisms. We still have ideas that Jesus could condemn, but he didn't come for that. He came because he loved us so much. And, you know, by the end of that sermon, I was just reflecting on how much God loved me and how much he loves me in spite of me. Not because of me, but in spite of me. And if he loved me that much, or he loves me that much, and I'm broken, and I'm wretched, and I'm done, and, and, and I struggle, and I, I have to press, and I have to fight. If he loves me that much, and I'm nothing, why can't I love my neighbor? Why, y'all, the whole gospel, and the whole gospel is loving God and doing your very best to obey him and loving your neighbor. I don't even know why I'm tearing up, but that is the gospel. That is the gospel. And when we preach it that way, to love God enough to try your very best to obey him. And when you disobey him, you repent and you do the best you can not to, not to fall short again. When we preach that and to take the time to treat everybody that we ever come in contact with, whether it's our friend, our family, our enemy, our neighbor, the person at the store, the stranger, the person on the street, the person who's selling drugs, the prostitute, the one who hates your guts for no apparent reason. When we grab hold to the true gospel, as Bishop Curry said, we'll see things change. We'll see things change. And y'all, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that is all that matters. Do we love God and do we love people? And I'm telling you, all the church going, all the sermons, all the singing, all the shouting, all the fasting, all the prayers, all the good deeds won't matter a heel of bees. Because guess what? When we stand before God, and Jesus said it in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. When we stand before him, he's not going to ask us about what we did in a church. He's not going to ask us 
about our religious resume and how well we did certain things. He's going to ask us, did we feed the poor, the hungry? Did we take care of the orphan children? Did we, did we visit the sick? Did we have compassion on those who are imprisoned? Because that was Jesus' call. Did we help those who couldn't help themselves? Because I help you when you couldn't help yourself. I, I, I was so full and reminded of why Jesus came in the first place. And it was because he loved us. When we are still in no condition. I don't care how much Holy Ghost you say you got. We are in no condition to be loved by God. Because we. We are nothing. We are nothing. We are absolutely nothing. But God is love. And if we can just, if the world, in those 13 minutes that he spoke, if the world could understand that that is what Jesus was all about. He didn't come to condemn us and to judge us. We had the law to do it. We have the law to show us how messed up we are. We are messed up. We are broken. We are undone. There's nothing good in us. There is nothing righteous in us. And the law shows us that every day. It shows us that every day. It shows us that it doesn't matter how much we desire to be the perfection of holiness that we can't be. The law shows us that every day. If we're honest with ourselves. But because God is love and Jesus was the human embodiment of that love. We have an opportunity to partake in grace. And to partake in mercy. And to feel God's compassion for us. Even when we don't deserve it. Even when we don't deserve it. We have that opportunity. And because God willfully and unselfishly extended that opportunity. To those of us who don't deserve it. Then we should take the time to honor God through our love for Him and our effort to obey Him. And we should honor that through trying to love everyone that comes across our paths. And sometimes, y'all, yeah, excuse me, sometimes we get so caught up. In church, that we forget the gospel. You hear me? We get so caught up in church. We get so caught up in mystery that we have lost sight of the gospel. It happens to be. It happens to all of us. We get so caught up. In ministry, in church, in whatever we, in our church names, and this, that, and the other. We get so caught up in church, we forget the gospel. Which is God so loved the world. He so loved us in our messed up forms. That he sent the embodiment of his love. To live among us and teach us what holiness is. And the holiness of God is loving God 
and loving people is nothing more and it's nothing less. Jesus said on these two things hang hey, salvation. On these two things, you can live in grace and you can live in mercy and you will have a key to the kingdom if you could just learn how to love. And I'll say it again. We get so caught up. We get so caught up in church. We get caught up in our rules and regulations. We get caught up on our standards. We get caught up on our service. We get caught up on our dressing. We get caught up in our music. We get caught up, caught up in the ties and in the in the in the positions and the titles. We get caught up and we've lost the gospel. We lost the gospel. We've lost the gospel of Jesus Christ. Which is that he loves us and he just wants us to love him back. But I thank God. I thank God for Bishop Curry. And I know it. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say this. Because this is how church folk is. I know church people are going to go and try to find his history and find his testimony. That don't matter. The man spoke the truth. And his relationship with God. It's his business. It's his business. Just like my relationship with God is my business, and your relationship with God is your business, and our business is to love Him and to love people. And a lot of us claim to to love God, and we have these high testimonies, but we don't treat one another right. And if that's the gospel you live, that's not God's gospel. If you love God, you'll obey Him. You'll do your best. And when you find yourself short, and I said when you find yourself short, you will have that sorrow in your heart that you disappoint God, and you will repent, and you will try it again. And if you love God, you will love those around you. I'm telling you, it may have been a winning going on and it may have been political fanfare, but I'll tell you what, the Lord used that man when the world was watching to remind all of us, especially us in the church, what the gospel of Jesus Christ really is. It's not all this foolishness. It's not about judging one another. It's not about condemning people. All of us are condemned by the law. But, it's about love. And thank God that he took a moment, 13 minutes, to remind us what love is. That love is God. And that's what he requires. That's all God requires. That's all God wants from us. He wants us to love him. And he wants us to love one another. He wants us to do the best we can. And where our hands fall short. His grace. And his mercy. Will cover us. But we have to put forth the effort. To love him. And to love people. And I just. I don't know. I'm grateful. Because at the end of the day, y'all, it don't matter. None of us are deserving of God's love. It doesn't matter the exploits and, and, and the endeavors. None of us, none of us, none of us are worthy. All of us are worthy of hell. But because of love. So the next time you have an opportunity to mistreat somebody, 
or to hold somebody and rake somebody across the coal because of what they may have done to you and they may have been wrong. You remember that you nor I am worthy of God's love. The next time you are bitch, the next time you want to cut people off, the next time you want to take from somebody, you remember that God didn't treat you the way you treated him. And yeah, I'm talking about us who say we got the Holy Ghost too. We still mistreat God. He still loves us in spite of. I didn't mean to stay this long. I'm off. But that, my friends, that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. That he loves us and he wants us to love him and to love other people. And guess what? God will work on our hearts individually. He will work on us individually. All this other stuff don't matter. It doesn't matter. God just wants us to love him and to love other people. And when we try it with all of our hearts, y'all, oh, when we try it with all of our hearts, we'll see the greater works. We'll see the miracles. We'll see all of that stuff, but we got to get back to the gospel. It ain't a bunch of rules. It ain't a bunch of UK. It's not bondage. It's not chains. It's love. And love is liberty. Love is life abundantly. Love is living to make God happy with your life. Love is striving to meet the expectation that God has put on your life. Love is understanding that we are nothing but sinners. But because of grace, we have a chance. That's the gospel. That is the gospel. And when Jesus returns... Yeah, excuse my snotty nose. And when Jesus returns, and when Jesus returns, he is going to come back. His church. His church are going to be those who attempted with everything in them to love God and to obey Him and to love everybody else around Him. That is our church. Because that is His gospel. That is why Christ came in the first place because we didn't even have sense to understand what love is. i tell you something that I always said. 